I've always had an interest. It's something that I've found that gives me enormous satisfaction, my own independent research, which focuses on stingrays. So my interest in rays is purely because they've gone under the radar quite a lot in terms of what we know about them from a scientific point of view. They're the underdog really, they're incredibly important and I'm trying to highlight their, their importance ecologically. And to be able to share that through education here at the Island School, is, as long as there is a need for me to be here to do that, then I will be here. Cape Luther Institute, the foundation is a multi-faceted organisation that promotes research, um, conservation and education, sustainable living, sustainable development in, in a place where we can be uh, in harmony with our surroundings. What I do specifically is research. I've always liked the idea of combining research science with education to share my passion with, with the younger people. One of our pangas will go out to the Schooner Keys it's a very dynamic habitat of deep channels, sand keys, um, and the islands that we'll go to have large sand banks and flats around them. And at high tide, the rays come in from the deeper water. We've got a group of Earthwatch volunteers that are coming with us this afternoon. We'll get out there, we'll take all our stuff, put it on the beach, and we'll go and look for rays. All right, guys, there's a ray over here, eh? I think I see it. Yeah. We, uh, we try and herd the rays into a net, um, it, it's a very active way of trying to catch them. We try and herd them towards a small seine net um, which we can then trap them in uh, and then with hand nets we can go in and scoop them up. first started this project we called it the Southern Stingray Project. We were under the impression that because no one had looked at stingrays in this specific area before that southern rays were the only true stingray belonging to a certain family. Um, but since we've started this project we've actually identified another species so we're finding from our initial results that these habitats are being partitioned between two distinct species we're finding southern rays inhabit more offshore areas, whereas this other species that we've recently found in quite large numbers here tend to inhabit the creek systems or the very close coastal environments from juveniles to adults. The animals are covered in mucus which helps them barrier to infection. Um, I'm also interested in any UV blocking potential. That's why I wear gloves. I don't want my sunscreen and natural oils to impact this animal in any way. And obviously this is for our protection. <laughs> so we're going to start off by measuring how wide she is. So we start at the widest point, hold it across the animal. 745 this width. 745 Could you make a note as well that the tail has been, like, half of it's been removed? This is what we call a steel-headed dart tag. 
This goes in the animal's petrol fin. So when we're chasing these animals around to catch, or we come back in a year's time, we can tell that this animal, based on this number that Kennedy's Mackenzie's just taken down, that we know that we tagged this animal on this date, this tide, on this location, and then if it's grown at all, we can calculate growth rates. So this is an external marker. We'll also put in an internal tag as well. This looks gruesome, but you'll see that the animal will hardly flinch. If I was to put one of these in you, I guarantee that you would run across the water to the next island. <laughs> all I do is I place it against the side of the pectoral fin, like this. Put it in and it comes straight out, and now this animal's been tagged. So that steel dart is embedded in the animal. It will bleed a little bit, but this tag now will stay in there. Part of this project is, is to be able to identify specific habitats for specific animals. So this raises all sorts of questions on how these animals are able to coexist without competition. And this is again something that we can use as a conservation tool because these animals are so important in terms of their biophysical impacts in the environment. And the more environments that these animals exist in that we can identify, it's the more cause for us to provide frameworks for management and conservation of these ecosystems. So if I take a little piece of tissue from its pelvic fin, what I can do is run a genetic analysis on that. So I can tell if this ray is related to all the other rays that we've caught on this island, the next island, the sandbar, rays up in the rest of this chain of islands, the Exumas, New Providence. Very interesting. Okay, now we're going to weigh her. This is the only time the animal comes out the water. 13 kilos. Everything we do here is, is for the research, for the conservation, but we do rely significantly on external funding, donations, that sort of thing, for us to, to continue to build on this foundation. And now we let her go.